Hey there, AP Hub team. This is Sanchez back with our first flipped video lecture for our new unit, Unit 4, which is Agricultural and Rural Land Use. Um, so this lecture is going to be titled Agriculture Revolutions, and we're going to introduce our first major um, agriculture revolution, the Neolithic Revolution, and also the second agriculture revolution, which is tied to the Industrial Revolution. Just a quick note to take a look at. Reminder, at this point, you should have your geo logbook open. Uh, we've already introduced several methods of note-taking, so out of the uh, ones listed on the screen, select the me method that best suits for your study and review purposes. And I want you to, again, pay attention to the bottom note. Reminder, these notes are not just for you to listen to the lecture once and jot down a few key ideas. These notes are necessarily for you to give yourself the time, the space, and the opportunity to review the material. Um, crazy as it seems, we're already starting Unit 4, um, so we continue to build and a lot of information to remember as we're necessarily setting our goal towards the magical date of May 12th, 2017. Um, so repetition is key. So whether you create a column or utilize post-it notes or some sort of strategy to make sure you're reviewing and reusing the material presented in this video lecture. All right, a graphic on the screen just to remind you in the sense of our, uh, we introduced our discussion of agriculture. Agriculture is the modification of Earth's surface through the cultivation of plants and um, animals uh, through consumption. In the sense of agriculture is how people get their food after hunting and gathering societies. So interesting enough, as geographers, uh, there's a couple questions we will, of course, ask going back to the why of where. Those are kind of the foundation questions. So as geographers, we want to know, of course, you know, where is agriculture distributed? Kind of taking a look at this lecture in terms of where agriculture originates and kind of diffuses out. And also geographers study why farming practices seem to vary around the world. And that will kind of lead us into our discussion of commercial versus subsistence agriculture. Finally, I want to remind you guys that um, agriculture, of course, and our economic activities falls under the primary sector. Um, so just to kind of review from our discussion of development. So our first agriculture revolution, which is also an AKA, also known as the Neolithic Revolution, most geographers or historians would say that it begins about uh, over 12,000 years ago and involves, again, the main key word to keep in mind is the domestication of both plants and animals. So what does the term domestication actually mean? Think of it as um, like taming the wild. Um, there's a big difference between what we see in the wild or what we call feral versus domestication. So if you look on stuff online and you kind of Google the difference, if you look at animals or you look at different plants, for example, evolution of apples or corn or wheat, you're going to see a big difference in terms of how plants have evolved over um, time. In fact, I just threw one on the screen. Let's take a look at um, corn. So you can see on the far left again, the wild ancestor of corn looks very different in terms of the evolution and the use of selective breeding and seeds. And, and again, now we have the introduction of, you know, hybrids that have really created what we necessarily think of as corn for today. Now, really, the groundbreaking or revolutionary thing that happens is the fact uh, with the first agriculture revolution we're not necessarily just chasing down or following herds of animals trying to create a, um, a food supply that is able to sustain a uh, family and tribes in this case we actually have a stationary or we can actually create permanent settlements now why is that such a big deal with permanent settlements then you're going to begin to necessarily have development then you're going to have the introduction of civilization. You're going to have uh, development of economies and government and different roles in societies. Um, so even side note, when we get into our discussion of women in agriculture, when we see a more settled um, method, women take a different role in terms of where they played active roles in hunting and gathering societies. Now we see them necessarily in that more male-dominated uh, where women are limited in terms of the jobs that they can necessarily perform for these tribes and civilizations. Um, women, for example, in food production or food preparation. So definitely, again, it changes, um, changes society. Also interesting enough, um, the agriculture revolution, we also see kind of independent development. We're going to look at a map in just a moment that shows across the board that these um, areas 
um, you know, spring up around the world. And it's interesting as humans begin to figure out how to solve these problems of trying to find a food supply um, to make sure they're able to feed their, their tribe or their civilization. All right, let's take a little, uh, little side note and take a little review in terms of the Neolithic Revolution, uh, looking at a little History Channel clip. Here we go. Farming is absolutely revolutionary. When we discovered how to farm, we suddenly increased the ability of the land to support us. It's the difference between there being only a few million humans on the planet and there being billions of humans on the planet. Most humans alive today subsist on the products of, of the agricultural revolution, the, the, the byproducts of farming. Humans were extremely good at hunting. One of the problems is about eight to 10,000 years ago, most of the large animals that humans were hunting died out. We were simply very successful. In those locations where you no longer had game, you had a choice between dying, moving, um, or settling down and trying to survive and thrive on plant life. Our ancestors were natural historians in their daily lives. And this was probably behind the domestication of plants. They probably noticed that if they took some of the seeds and rather than eating them, left them on the ground or put them in, in the compost heaps or the, the dumps near their camp, they grew. Farming arises in many different places, totally unconnected with each other. And that is the beginning of civilization. We had to come up with better tools, better ways to build our houses, to protect our land, to uh, make our clothing and so forth. We had new materials to use. We had new uh, plants to grow. And we started to develop organized societies. We have to have a hierarchical system uh, that's going to have somebody in charge to make sure that things are done. Farmers are invested in land. Inevitably, if there's more than one person farming, this brings them into conflict with one another. When we moved from hunting and gathering, we stopped being predators and started becoming prey to a great extent. Warfare kind of calls farming as a natural sequence. You have stuff to lose. You have a vested interest. And we needed to create other things to protect that. Farming is the most important ingredient in human civilization. It is the seed from which everything grows. From the first crop to the notion of property, nation states, cities, empires. It is the roots, quite literally, of all society. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at this map in terms of asking the question, where does agricultural uh, agriculture develop? Most uh, geographers and historians tend to agree that um, we see the diffusion out here from uh, the Fertile Crescent, which is located more in the uh, southwest or the Middle East region. Um, and we can see, in many cases, a lot of geographers would say it's a good example of stimulus diffusion. The idea, you know, stimulate the idea that we can actually sustain or plant seeds or actually uh, domesticate animals but definitely understanding that not all plants are going to work in every single environment. And there's a multitude of factors in terms of soil, in terms of climate. So a lot of different things to, to consider. All right. So you can also see um, this list here. You can get a sense of some of the major products and, and things that were domesticated. In West India, we have the domestication of wheat and barley. Um, Southwest Asia, we have barley and wheat. And we also see the domestication particularly of sheep and goats. In North China, we have the domestication of millet, which begins, which you're probably asking, gee, what's millet? Take a look at. Um, millet, it's kind of the consistency. It, it's a grain, kind of looks like quinoa. Um, so millet is something that we see across China. Um, South Mexico, we look in the squash and more maize or more corn. And Northern Peru, we have the introduction of cotton, squash, and beans.
All right, so to finish off this first half of our agriculture revolution, put a little quiz question on the front screen to take a look at. So the question is asking, which of the following is not a major hearth of the agricultural development? Is it A, Western Africa, B, Central America, C, Southern Europe, or D, South America? Let me see, I don't have my Jeopardy music ready to go, but you can kind of hum it in your head. Uh, think about what that map and what you wrote down your notes. Don't be a cheater, McCheaterson. And the correct answer is C, Southern Europe. So Western Africa, Central America, and South America would kind of be designated in that category. All right, so let's pause right there, and we're going to switch over to focus on the second agriculture revolution with our second video.